Okay, so when we talk about premium Windows Ultrabooks, the first name that comes to your mind is the Dell XPS. Now for years, the XPS has been the go-to recommendation for a premium Ultrabook that offers both a premium design and stellar performance as comparable to the Apple MacBooks, but in a Windows form factor. Now with the new Dell XPS 15, the company had aimed to continue in its already great legacy with this amazing OLED panel. But after having used this machine for quite some time now, I have to say, I am kind of disappointed. Let me tell you why. This is one from GTR and you're watching my in-depth review of the Dell XPS 15, the 2021 variant. Let's get started. All right, so first things first, let's talk about the design here, which is kind of similar. Well, not kind of, it's basically same as the 2020 variant, which is sort of fine because it still looks super premium. You do have two color options, black and white, while the lid remains silver in both. Now, personally, I like this black color that we have because the keys are just easier to read here thanks to the contrasty look, though I have used the white color previously and that definitely looks a tad bit more premium. Now the build quality here is top notch and the hinges are quite sturdy too. One thing that I did not like however is how sharp the edges here are. They're genuinely sharp to the point where I've genuinely scratched my wrists while I was typing on these things. So yeah, I mean that is one thing that you have to keep in mind. Now in terms of connectivity, on the left side you have two USB-C ports, both of which are Thunderbolt 4 and support USB power delivery as well as display out. Over to the right side, you have a 3.5mm headphone jack, a full-size SD card reader, and a USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port. It's nice to see Dell include a full-size SD card reader here, but I personally would have liked to see at least one USB-A port as well. Thankfully, Dell did include a dongle for the same in the box, and I've been using it since day one to connect my mouse to the system. Next up, we have the display, which is clearly the highlight here. It's a 3.5K resolution OLED touchscreen panel with a 16 is to 10 aspect ratio. Now the panel here is provided by Samsung and just as you would expect from an OLED panel, it offers crisp images, vivid colors, deep blacks and great response times. Notice how I mentioned vivid colors. You see, while Dell provides their amazing Premier Color tool to easily switch between various color profiles, the panel's colors were almost always too saturated. You don't get neutral grays in it, with there being an extensive boost in the greens and the blues. Now, just to be clear, I'm not saying that you cannot use this panel for editing beats. All I'm saying is that it does not come calibrated out of the box and you will have to spend some time manually calibrating things here and there. Now, the closest to proper colors inside the profiles is the vibrant mode because it supposedly offers the full coverage of P3 color space. Other than that, the panel supports HDR and using the XPS 15 for entertainment needs is an amazing experience. The audio here is also pretty loud and quite crisp thanks to its pair of 1.5 watt stereo tweeters with a pair of 2.5 watt stereo woofers which makes for a nice and balanced sound stage. One thing that I wanted to stress on is that the hinge here basically restricts the laptop from going further than this. It's just locked at this position which basically makes the whole touchscreen experience kind of pointless. I mean apart from just browsing on the web there is no use case for the touchscreen on this form factor. I mean, it's a 15 inch laptop. It's not even a 13 inch laptop that's very portable. Speaking of portability, even the non touchscreen models of this thing were lighter. So basically Dell is asking you to pay more for a touchscreen option that basically adds zero to the productivity factor. Okay, now moving along, let's talk about the keyboard here. Now, personally, I do like the soft feedback here that's offered by the Dell XPS 15. But yeah, in the long run, I found myself not being a fan of it. Now, once again, to be very clear, I'm not saying that it's a bad keyboard. It's just, it's nice for soft bursts of typing, but for extended periods of typing, the feedback is very, very soft. And to be honest, it's not that comforting either. See, the Dell XPS 15 offers well spaced out keys and a nice layout that you can easily adapt to. The key travel does take some time getting used to, but does overall aid you well. It's just that this keyboard's springy action doesn't adjust well for extended sessions of typing. Now, if you're a business user who spends a lot of their time typing on their keyboard, I would suggest looking something in the Lenovo ThinkPad X lineup of laptops because those things offer the best keyboard experience out there, whether it's for short bursts or for extended periods of typing. With the XPS 15, well, extended periods can feel a bit uneasy for your fingers. 
Now below the keyboard, we have the massive touchpad and that's one strong area for the Dell XPS 15. I mean, I've said it before countless number of times and I'll say that once again. If there is one brand, one company that makes a touchpad that can compete with that experience that is offered by the Apple MacBooks, it is the Dell XPS. The XPS 15 features a large touchpad that works flawlessly and is only laid down by Windows' own limitations. Now, before we get down to the performance factor, a quick word about the webcam here. It's bad. I mean, okay, some people might find it better than some other laptops that they've used previously. And while that's a fair assumption to make, for its price, the webcam is really bad. I mean, the colors just keep on moving. There's a massive amount of graininess happening here. There's a lot of delay here. There is zero sharpness here. And I mean, yeah, it's just a very bad experience on a webcam from a premium business laptop. See, you have to understand that the XPS lineup is made for professional users, like professional business users. And the webcam is a very important feature, especially in these times. And it's really not nice to see Dell have a very mediocre webcam here. The only good part here is that the IR sensors are here. So at least Windows Hello works fine. But that's about it. Personally, I would have preferred if they had just the fingerprint scanner, but included a decent webcam. But unfortunately, that's not the case here. All right, next up, let's talk about the performance. So our unit here comes equipped with a Tiger Lake Intel Core i7 11800H processor, coupled with 16 GB of DDR4 RAM clocked at 3200 MHz. There's a 5 and 2 GB NVMe SSD for Micron. And for graphics, we have the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 Ti GPU. Now on paper, that sounds like a very compelling package and a very powerful one for an ultrabook of this form factor. And that is on paper. In reality, the performance is slightly on the lower end of what you would expect. Now, before I talk about actual numbers, just to be clear here, I am not saying that the performance is bad on the XP15. All I'm saying is that you would expect much better performance from a package like this, something that the XP15 does not offer. But then again, considering the kind of target audience, it might not be an issue. See, here's what I'm talking about. You have the benchmarks in front of your screen, whether you're talking about synthetic ones or even some gaming benchmarks. The performance is decent, but there is a lot of throttling that's noticeable here. So while you can hit the 4.2 GHz of peak frequency, that's only for a couple of seconds, after which the system throttles down. Secondly, Dell went with a lower 45 watt TDP variant of the GPU here, which although it's fine for normal photo editing and light video editing as well, can't really be pushed to the limits. Now, once again, just to be clear, I am not saying that the XP15 is a bad machine in terms of performance or it cannot handle your performance needs. Like I have been making thumbnails on the XP15 using Photoshop, worked fine. My editor even used the XP15 to take out a render of a sample project file that we use for focus editing needs and the laptop was able to handle it just fine. No significant issues whatsoever. Now, in my personal experience, I think Dell is just playing safe here. Because the good part here is that the performance here should still be enough for most folks. And the XPS 15 offers all of this while staying extremely silent, which is basically defines how a user's needs differ from person to person. Like for me, if I am paying this much of a premium for a laptop, I would expect the maximum performance from it. Sure, Dell wants to play it safe and wants to throttle performance just to ensure that the laptop does not heat up. Sounds good as long as I'm given an option to basically unlock it to its full potential. Even when I set the laptop to the ultra performance mode, I do not get the maximum performance out of it, which feels kind of bad to me personally, if I was to pay a premium for this laptop. So yeah, in a nutshell, the XPS 15 offers good and silent performance, but can't really be pushed to the limit if you need it to. Lastly, there's the battery life. And that's another bummer. Now, in my normal use case, the Dell XPS 15 here lasted an average of six to seven hours, which might sound fine for a normal Windows Ultrabook, but this is no normal or average Windows Ultrabook. This is a premium Ultrabook, especially coming from under the Dell XPS lineup. Now, I've come to expect at least 10 hours of battery backup from the XPS lineup because that is just how good XPS laptops have been over the years. And I mean, it's just not living up to the hype here. And these numbers are when I was using everything in dark mode from Windows to even Google Chrome using the dark reader extension on. 
Now show, sure, charging it is quite easy thanks to the USB power delivery support. But honestly, Dell really needs to work on their battery management profiles. Now, I think that might be down to the OLED panel itself because we've seen it happen on other laptops as well, especially from the house of Asus, that having an OLED panel does actually have a drastic impact on your battery backup. So that could be the case here. I'm not entirely sure about it, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the XPS 15 OLED variant does not last as long as you would expect a machine of this form factor from the XPS lineup to last. Which basically brings us to the big question, is the Dell XPS 15 worth it? So our unit here, as configured, costs you about 2.25 lakhs. And for that price, I don't think it's worth it. See, here's the thing, that's a very premium price tag for a machine that does not offer the full performance potential. Sure, the OLED panel here is great, but it does take a toll on the battery life. The keyboard could be better, and the edges could use some smoothing. The performance output is fine for most folks, but for the premium that you're paying, you should have the freedom to unlock it to its full potential. Something that's not possible on this one. Now, with all of that being said, there is one thing that cannot be denied, which is the Dell XPS brand lineup. Now, similar to the Apple MacBooks, the XPS lineup has become a style statement in the world of Windows. So there are a lot of premium business users who just buy a Dell XPS laptop simply as a style quotient. And to be honest, for most of the folks out there, the performance offered by the XPS 15 is not bad at all. And well, that was it. If you found this video helpful, make sure to let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel for more awesome tech content. Till then, this is one from GTR and I'll see you in the next one.